everybody. It's Donna Woods with Photonic Health. And in this version of Health Made Simple, I am going to be chatting with Linda from Tapestry Girths. And I met Linda at Equine Affair. And I mean, you know, we all know there's leather girths, there's neoprene girths, there's all sorts of them. And I have a mare that actually has uh, chondroids in her guttural pouch. And essentially what that means is her airways are partially blocked from breathing. And so when we put her under saddle, she really tends to hold her breath and she, and, and she can't breathe as normal as a, another horse. And so we've done a lot of therapy to shrink those chondroids down, but we also still wanted to provide her um, extra breathing room with Will. And Linda's um, births are absolutely revolutionary. And we literally, I got it, put it on her the same day I got it. And it was like a completely different horse. She was relaxed, head down. This is a saddlebred. So, you know, relaxed, head down, blowing out. Um, we could really feel her breathing through her, her entire body, which is something that um, since the chondroids showed up, we haven't been able to feel. So it's just been absolutely life-changing for me and for um, my horses. Um, I've got another horse I'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, but welcome, Linda. Thanks for being on the show with me. Well, thanks for getting me on your show, Donna. And I love, you know, to hear stories like the one you just told. Yeah. Makes my heart They're, sing. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, my goal is, well, you know, I've got seven horses and I think five different breeds represented. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And, and doing dressage with saddlebreds is not common. Um, and, and, and every horse brings its own challenges. And, and it's not the horse's challenge. It's our challenge to, uh, for me, I feel anyways, to educate ourselves and to do the research so that we can make them as happy and comfortable as possible. And um, gosh, that's what, you, that's what your girths do. Well, Thank you. Um, you know what? It's I have a lifetime of experience with the horses. I've been in the industry for 40 years. Uh, my, my, my sport of passion was eventing. So I, I went up to the advanced level with steeplechase. I've also um, trained thoroughbred racehorses for 10 years, long time official in eventing, 21 years as a TD um, and a competition coach as well. So a lifetime really of watching horses, Donna. And my God, they're always talking um, they're Always. either telling us about, you know, the bit we've got on them, the, the girths we have on them, the training we're doing with them. And we really have to be very cognizant of, okay, you just flicked your ear. You just swished your tail. You're bloating. Why? What, what you're talking to me. And we have to become very good at, at trying to decipher what they're saying. Yes, absolutely. And I love it. And that's one of the reasons why um, I was so drawn to you and your product is because you've got this unbelievable education and background and experience, not only from a like business owner of an equine business perspective, but actually being on the horses, competing with the horses. And I think probably two of the toughest sports, I mean, three day eventing is no joke, <laughs> like no joke. And it's so, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it is not for the faint. Neither is owning a business, right? Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> but, uh, but it, you know, and so that's very different than somebody that goes, oh, hey, I see an opportunity and let's just put some girths out there because we can make some yep. money. It's a very mm -hmm. different, um, it's a very different energy. Like it's a very different energy from that perspective. And, you know, our product, like, we feel like I'm so in tune with energy and so sensitive to energy. And I feel that me personally, I feel like that, you know, those things, everything holds a vibration to it. And mm -hmm. even somebody's product, you know, like going to Walmart and buying something off the shelf versus, you know, buying handcrafted soap that somebody put their heart and soul and vibration into because they absolutely love their craft. Yes. Um, is very different. And I mean, that's, 
minuscule because, you know, soap is, I mean, soap is not soap, but, um, you know, same thing with your product, like the gir the way that you explain your girth to me is so incredible. So, um, and you, I, I know I'm guessing, but probably one of your, pro like, probably one of the biggest questions you get is, well, how are your products different or better? Okay. So can you go yeah. through and explain that a little bit to me? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess we're really, I also have a degree in wildlife biology. So I have anatomies and I have physiologies. So you, you appreciate that every time a horse takes a canter stride, they breathe. And the girths that are traditional and have been around forever be out of string, made of string. You know, if we go back to the, you know, my early days, even in pony club, you know, how many of our school horses went in a string girth, right? Um, right. Leather girths, full leather girths. Um, some have elastic at the end. Some have one elastic at one end. You know, it just, it never it never addressed the horse's anatomy of every time they move, every time they breathe, there's a lot of movement from the sternum up the rib cage. And, you know, it's no different than you wearing a leather belt. It'll hold your pants up, but can be incredibly uncomfortable, right? How that right. buckle will dig in and, and lean over. And we're doing the same thing to a horse with a traditional leather girth. We're, we're saying, here you go. I got to strap this saddle on and I'm going to do it up tight. And I don't really care how you, how uncomfortable it is for you. So mine is different because listening to horses, watching horses, watch what they do when you do put on a traditional girth, anxiousness in the cross ties, sitting down on cross ties. They want to bite you. They swish their tail. They pin your ears or they walk like a crab for a few minutes after you put the girth on, they don't breathe deeply. They don't relax. And I thought, okay, enough, enough. Obviously right. this, this, this isn't working. What could I do to change it? Well, at the racetrack on race day, they use an elastic girth and it's a three inch wide piece of elastic. And I thought, you know what, that's a great idea, but they don't have anything central. So that's why on a race horse, you've got to crank that girth up so tight. So nothing obviously moves during the race. And I right. thought, okay, it needs to be absolutely symmetrical. It needs to have the elastic where the horse will benefit most from it, which is from the sternum up, not at the spine down or underneath our leg, um, where really they don't, they don't get the, the greatest uh, benefit from that, from the elastic there and make it totally independent on each side. So if the right leg's going forward, the girth doesn't need to shift with that right leg like a traditional girth will. When you've got those solid pieces of leather, be it a, a shoulder relief girth, you know, that, that whole uh, unit has to move. It's not independent. Whereas the way I designed my girth was because of the central pad and the elastic, you know, each side is independent from each other as well. So really there's no, no other girth on the market like mine. I, I do have the, the uh, international patents on it, uh, Canada, US and all of Europe uh, because it is so different, unique, but it, it's effective and it works. Right, right. I love that. Can we, and so, you know, the rib cage, let's talk about the sternum and rib cage because, you know, we, we do light therapy, we do, you know, body work with lights on horses and dogs and cats but um, this is specific to horses. And so we're very sensitive to, you know, it's not just the pole, it's not just the sacrum, like we're dealing with an entire horse here. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that I feel kind of gets lost in the shuffle or maybe not even addressed a lot of times is the sternum. And it's such a sensitive part of the horse and it's also so integral to, proper breathing for them and, and the rib cage. And so you were taught, you had talked to me at Equine Affair about like the placement of your girth and the support that you provide. So can you go into a little bit more detail on that? Yeah, absolutely. So with respect to the sternum, you know, horses love simple. They love simple tack, simple feed, simple bit, simple training to get the job done, right? Less is better with horses. Yep. So really all I've done for the sternum is I put neoprene. Um, so they've got some cushioning over the pectorals and in that area, my girth doesn't um, adversely affect that area, but really 
it, it's more the elastic up the sides that allows the horse to take those deep breaths right. and allows them to move through the shoulders. Um, that is really key to this design. So what I did for the sternum, because it, it's really quite fascinating. If you watch a horse jump in slow motion, you'll actually see that as they bring the, the front end up, it's like they stretch through that sternum area, right through the rib cage, through the sternum, up through the front end. And, right. it, and again, it's just lovely how the elastic lets them do that rather right. than a tight leather one or a string or a mohair, depending on your sport, how restrictive it can be. And you can see it in actual pictures. Right, right. I love, I love that. What has been like, um, you know, we're, I know that we're in business because our, at the core of what we do, we're here to help people mm -hmm. help their animals and be able to have success with them and be able to help heal them um, faster and better and more economically than other ways. And so um, with your girths and, and so we love hearing like, I mean, we've been in business since 2009 and to, the, to this day, like literally right before I walked in, Brian, my husband went to work on one of his client's horses yesterday and he was, and you know, the vet had been out, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, miracle, he went out, did his thing and, you know, phone call this morning, the horses all better went off at a trot and a canter. Um, and so we never get tired of hearing our success stories and I'm sure you don't either. What's been one of your biggest transformations that you've heard back from your clients? Well, one that always comes to mind and I've got, I've got tons of them and you'll yeah. see on my Instagram page, every Tuesday's testimonial Tuesday, and we will put up, you know, a testimonial that we got during that week that, that really is so relevant to really anyone that has a horse, but one that absolutely sticks out would have been probably about four years ago. Now I was doing sales calls. I'm also the Canadian rep for Shire's equestrian. It's a beautiful marriage. Shire's oversees my manufacturing and I've been their sales rep for 10 years now. Nice. So I was out. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a perfect, perfect relationship. So I was out on the East coast of Canada. I was in a feed store and I don't know how we got talking about girths. So the, the gentleman said, Oh, is that that girth with all the elastic? And I said, yeah, actually, that's the one I'm talking about. I, I invented that one. And he said, oh, my God, let me get my girlfriend on the phone. And so I said, OK, great. So he gets his girlfriend on the phone and he says, you're never going to guess who's standing beside me. You know that girth you love? Tell her your story. And so we got on the phone and she said, Linda, I have a quarter horse. And every time I tack him up, he wants to kill me. I have every girth on the market. It got so bad. I actually told my trainer, maybe he wants to go to somebody else. I saw your girth and thought, what's one more girth? I'm going right. to give it a try. And she said, Linda, you changed my life. Stop doing all that negative behavior. Aww. And I oh. do, Donna, I hear that time and time again. Um, just how different you've made my horse. Actually, I had a, a, a tax store who she uses my girth. Um, Ellen, uh, up, up at the horse habit, I was chatting with her yesterday. So Ellen, I hope it's okay. I tell the story mm -hmm. and, um, well, she told me, uh, uh, about her own horse where she had taken my girth into the house to clean it or something, went out to the barn, didn't have it on her and thought, Oh, I'm not going back to the house to get that girth, put her usual girth on that horse. And he refused to move at the mounting block. She said, Linda, I had to go back in and grab your girth. But <laughs> untag, <story>, retag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm not moving. <laughs> I'll wait here. You go get it. I'll be back. Right. The, I the love story, that. The story that she told me yesterday was she was at a therapeutic uh, riding facility mm. and they had a school horse there that would refuse to move for anybody. And she said, Linda, I took up one of your girths and put it on this horse, changed him. To off he went, happy at the trot from before he refused to oh. move. Oh, you know, so stories like that just constantly motivate you, constantly reinforce that, you know, all the blood, sweat and tears that as a, as a business owner and entrepreneur that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis is worth yeah. it. Yeah, 
I love, I love that. And, you know, we've been into horses for 25 years, not 20 longer than 27 years now. Where did time go? But, you know, it's one of the things that like there's, I have never ran into anybody that was talking about girths and how impactful they can be other mm -hmm. than, oh, well, just try this or, you know, like give the neoprene ones or, you know, get the, no, these ones are better. And so when you were talking about the belt and whatnot, um, I was actually like, no, it's sort of like a woman's bra. So sorry, yeah, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to go there for a minute. <laughs> you know, like if we have a leather yep like under where or it's so tight and we could we can't even physically expand our rib cage yes. to breathe yes. like we're supposed to be and that's just being <laughs> you know that's just us being bipeds now i couldn't imagine being a quadruped and um you know having to go like this i mean i you know so i'm gonna How happy would you be yeah, I'm going to challenge my people. Like, if you really want to know, if you use leather girths and you're not quite sure, take a leather belt, put it yeah. right up, like right where your brow would be, and get it get it snug, and then get on on your floor on all fours and start moving around and see yeah. how constricting it can be. Absolutely, Donna. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the last thoroughbred I had off the track that it's because of him that I finally said, okay, enough is enough. I can change this. Yeah. I would bring his tack to the stall. And this was a saddle that was custom for him. So I knew the saddle wasn't an issue. Right. He right away would go to the back of the stall, drop his head, pin his ears. And I thought, okay, fine, I'm going to change this. So yeah. when I took my idea to a custom um, leather maker who uh, had been in the industry for forever, Brian, as I'm describing the girth that I want him to design for me and make, he went, oh my God, actually, I think you're onto something. And I said, yeah. well, I'm tired. I have a thoroughbred that is his, his attitude is so bad. It's almost bad enough. I need to put him away in the winter because he wouldn't move forward at the canter. Uh, um, I knew the sound because you stick him on a lunge line, happy to go. But right. as soon as I just put that traditional leather girth, elastic at both ends, I'm an A pony clubber. So it would have been as soft as I could have made it. And right. he just shut down and said, no, I'm not going. Yeah. So it was him uh, that I designed it for. So it took him three weeks to mentally come around. Once I started using this new girth right. to actually, when I brought the tack, he was waiting for me. Oh. And I opened up his Dutch door. His, his feet, he'd kind of do a half step out and go, come on, hurry up, tack me up, let's go. And we were able with my daughter to show him jumpers in the winter time. Whereas before I'm thinking, I'm going to have to put you away for the winter because you do not want to move forward with this tack. Aww. One simple change. One sim simple, that's it. You know, that's right? the thing is, you know, I think sometimes, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too, especially with my mare that had the chondroids, like, you know, she, she went a couple of years because we were just like, you know, the mm -hmm. saddle, the, this body worker, that body worker, this on the feet, that on the, you know, head stall, blah, 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 blah. And it was like, well, you know, nothing we would have done could have fixed the chondroids. So once we address those super simple and then get her a girth that actually allows her to breathe freely. And it's just like, you know, she missed two years of training um mm -hmm. and her and her half sister was in heavy training during that time not heavy training but you know three four four times a week and yep. um and she's really not that far behind the one that missed two years of training because she's so relaxed and whatnot mm -hmm. so yeah so it's huge like it makes a huge huge difference in the training and what i love is the fact the racehorses so has the racehorse industry, like, have you pursued that at all? Or have you just been so busy with the other disciplines that you haven't really had time to, um, yeah. you know, wave your flag out at the racehorse people? I'll be honest, I haven't knocked on that door very hard. With the yeah. show horses, the dressage horses, the jumpers, um, your amateur riders, you know, yeah. that has been so time consuming, inventing new products that um, I have given a few out to some racehorse trainers and they absolutely um, um, saw the difference. I just haven't, that it hasn't been a focus of, of, of sure. my, um, my time right now. It's just yeah. trying to keep up with everything else is just 
yeah. as you know, as a, as a business owner, it's like, there's only so many hours in the day. Only the- <laughs> correct. Correct. And, and it's one of those things where, you know, you have to pick where your heart truly is. Right. And not that we're not with the forces. Well, I very much, I very much market to the off the track thoroughbred. So any of your horses that are transitioning from the racetrack, like I partnered with Long Run, which is a a rehoming facility here in Ontario. Um, I partner with them and absolutely, because I'll say, guys, the reason these horses come off the racetrack so girthy, yes, it could be ulcers, but a a big part of it is how they've been tacked up their entire life as a racehorse. So I might not be able to get into the racetrack right now, but I can certainly help you as you start to now retransition that horse into a sport horse. This is the tack that they're looking for. Right. I, I yeah. love that. I love that. And that, you know, that's something that we encounter. We get a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, the, my horse is girthy and stuff like that. And we definitely have ways that we teach people how to check to see if it's more of a gastrointestinal mm-hmm. ulcer type thing. Um, and a lot of times it is, but a lot of times it isn't. And so right. um, that's going to lead me into my story on my PRE. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's an eight years old. Um, he's absolutely lovely, like sweet guy. Mm-hmm so laid back, so chill, but like right before I met you, I noticed that he was starting to, like when I'd go to tack him up, he would sort of turn and he wouldn't, you know, he'd just turn and look at me and like sort of touch his nose to the girth. And I was like, hmm, he hasn't done that before. And and I, I was just like, yeah, that's not him communicating with me as in, hey, mom, how's it going? It was more like, yeah, I'm not so keen on this. And as, you know, each ride, he never got bad because he's a super polite guy. Um, But for me, I just tune into all of those tiny little things and went, oh, he's not happy about something. You know, he was never not happy enough to like, pin his ears back or buck or rear or yep. whatnot. Um, but um, when I got your girth and put it on him, like all of that went away. And it's sort of funny that you talked about the three week process because um, I'm very novice. I sort of did things backwards. We got into horses, you know, 26 years ago and started out with gated horses and, you know, a, oh. two years ago I decided I should learn dressage and I should learn how to ride a trotty horse like <laughs> completely backwards right and so I'm very very novice like very very not like you know very <laughs> novice um because I want to make sure because he's a great horse and and his training his foundation is amazing so I'm like I don't want to screw that up and but just and he's one of these horses where like he won't give me he doesn't fill in the gaps at all oh, yes at all okay. and so a lot of people would maybe get frustrated with that but i'm like okay he's teaching me something he's teaching me something well it's and so he's been riding we've been riding him in that girth now for about because of all the weather issues we've had yeah. in Florida, um about four weeks and I do have to say that the past three rides that I've had on him have been amazing like the best <laughs> rides I've ever had so um I I think it's just one of those things it's a combination of me but I really think it has a lot to do with that girth because mm-hmm. You know, like the first time I put it on him, I could barely get it on him, you know, because he was holding his breath, like he was holding his breath. So I'd have to move him around, I'd adjust, move him around again and readjust and then we could get on. And now I don't have to do that. Like he's, he doesn't hold his breath when I go to put his girth on. It's just like, wow. So it's that rewiring of his neural pathways on what that physical experience is with this yep. particular girth. Excellent. Excellent. No, that's that is that can be very typical, Donna, for a lot of horses. They have had that behavioral pattern. They're anticipating what's coming. 
they bloat because they're protecting their intercostal muscles. Um, yes. Some horses are very quick to let go. Some others are going, mm, are we, you know, is this going right. to, you know, is this a, a one-off? Right. Are you going to keep doing this? You know, right. I had a woman, another testimonial. She had a horse for 15 years, go to bite her on the cross ties whenever she did the girth up. My girth first time never did it and hasn't wow. done it. Wow. And so no, you're right. Every horse is different. Every horse is right. Every horse is different, but it all means something. And so for us, like when we teach our classes, we're like the horse is communicating with you all the time, whether you're in the saddle, out of the saddle, anytime you're within 50 feet of that horse. And sometimes even further, they're always communicating with you and they're trying to tell you something. And I know for a lot of people that might be a little bit woo woo, but, um, you know, I want to have a happy horse, I want a really great relationship with my horses. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I go out to the paddock, I got seven horses. When I go out there, they all come running. I never have any issues trying to catch my horse nice. because they're like, hey, you know, this lady cares. Um, and, you know, I think, well, Pat Pirelli, I think said it, you know, he's one of his famous sayings is, the horse doesn't care what you know until he knows how much you care. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Our animals know everything we think we say and we do. I love that too. I love that. That is amazing. True. <laughs> Careful what amazing. energy you're taking with, with you to the barn. Exactly. So if you had, um, if you could provide our audience with a couple tips on what they could implement at home or what to look for, what would, what would you, how would you, what would you say? What would you recommend? So uh, you mean with regards to reading what the horse might be saying? The, regarding the girth. Like, okay. Let's, let's talk about like the girth because that's what our focus is. <laughs> Okay, so I guess the first thing would be uh, fit. Fit is so important. And again, you can pick up any horse magazine or you can see it all over social media, um, how many people actually aren't fitting their girth correctly. So if you're riding in a dressage girth, a monoflap girth or a cinch, studies have shown that the most sensitive part of a horse now with a girth is that area behind the point of the elbow. So it's really important to clear that area. So go higher. You, you know what? You can't go up high and too high. You can certainly be too low so that when that leg comes back, you've got the, the leather, you've got the buckle parts, they're interfering with that leg as it comes back. The other thing with a longer girth, you're going to stabilize the saddle better. And that's something I hear a lot too from people. Well, will this girth help to stabilize my saddle? So again, if you're on those really round horses, horses that are shaped like a barrel, you have the worst, <laughs> worst girth, right. uh, problem ever. And again, you can't guarantee anything with any horse because of confirmation, but the longer your girth, the more secure everything will be. That's why I, I, I am a traditionalist, traditionalist. I stick to the longer, you know, get them right up underneath your leg. Your leg is as close as, as it's ever going to need to be on a horse. So fit is key. Um, so make sure your girth three to four inches above that point of the elbow. So that would be certainly a tip. Um, another, another question I always get asked is how do you clean these girths? Um, simple. It's called TLC. Um, the neoprene is cemented on. So that is, that is the, the part that needs the most tender loving care. Just take a nice, uh, damp sponge or a cloth and just wipe it down the elastic. I'll just use a dandy brush with some, with some soap, regular, uh, saddle soap. Um, and then the leather I will clean and condition as I normally would. Those girths will last you three years, uh, easily. They're not a traditional leather girth. They're not meant to last 20 years. Right. Um, and I do tell people after three years, just replace it. Um, it might still look really quite good. I'll leave that up to you. But that mm -hmm. is just something that we've learned over the years. I had one, one girl who had used it for four years straight on five horses a day. Wow. <laughs> she went to the booth at the trade show, I said, sweetheart, that girth doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of my original Kickstarter uh, supporters. So I said, you know what? I'm sending you a girth. <laughs> Aww, I love that. I yeah. Love that. So, you know, um, those are the biggest tips. Oh, and another one, um, 
tightening the girth. And again, a lot of this stuff we speak to on our Facebook and Instagram, we try to do a lot of edu educational posts on our social media as well. Right. So we will speak to all of these if you, if you scroll through, but um, you don't need to over tighten this girth. It's, it's a different feel as you've probably realized Donna, that it's, it, you, you can still stick your fingers and underneath the elastic. Um, I've had some people say, I don't have to do it up as tight now because it actually molds to the horse better. Correct. The neoprene will help to keep it uh, in place as well. The saddle and the girth in place. So just don't over tighten it. That's, I didn't design it to, to, you know, create another issue. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So Linda, if people have questions or they're interested in more information on your girths and your other products, what, what is the best way for them to find you? Well, I would, I would probably um, suggest either emailing me or calling me. I talk to people every week about the girth. I honestly do. They're sending me pictures and I'll say, you know what, I think it needs to go up higher or, or I think the fit that you have now is perfect. So my company is Tapestry Equine Products and my email is Linda at Tapestry Equine Products. Sorry, it's so long. That's and okay. you're more than happy to call. Um, give me a call if you want to have a chat, you know, uh, and my number is 416-892-3725. More than happy to have a chat um, or reach out to me on social media. Okay. And what, what, how would people find you under social media? Are you under tapestry, tapestry equine products as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And what are you on? Is you're on Instagram, Facebook? Yes. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, yes. Awesome. 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 I love that. If you guys have any questions or if you're experiencing some unresolved issues with your horses that are not being rectified by proper saddle fit, bit fit, or body work, you know, look at the girth. It's probably like, I'm going to say the most reasonably cost things that you can swap out and the easiest things you can swap out. And Linda is absolutely an gem of information and she personally helped us through our process so when she says she's on the phone every day I believe it because we were you know she was texting with me my trainer and we're you know to make sure that we got the fit absolutely right um, Linda it was so great to have you I am so excited about your products and what you bring to the table and to help revolutionize the equine industry and um if you guys have any questions, again, her website is tapestryequineproducts.com. And um, please feel free to reach out for her. Um, if you're on YouTube and watching this, we do have the links below. So be sure to click on the links. And if you like this interview, be sure to like, um, like, give us a like and give us a shout out because I think that Linda is just amazing and um, would love to be able to help spread the word on her amazing products. So thank you. Well, thanks, Donna, for letting me tell my story. Greatly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.